Hey YouTube, this is Southern Prepper One. Got a lot of questions in the comment section. Probably still have a lot more because I haven't checked it in a few hours. But I want to answer some of those questions. Um, some people are saying it's silly to even prepare for nuclear war. Uh, and some people are saying it's never going to happen. And, and that could be true, but you know what? There's people that are concerned that want answers. And really being educated in this matter is not costing you anything. Um, and it could pay off huge dividends if something does happen. And as we're progressing with this like, Ukrainian-Russian war, um, we're not cooling down. As, as Russia is not fulfilling what they think is their uh, push and their, to grab as much of Ukraine and to uh, uh, take care of the Ukrainian defenses, they're not doing it as quickly as they want to. So they're becoming frustrated, which could lead to other problems. As we supply more arms to Ukraine, it could draw in more countries. Uh, and World War One and World War Two, people didn't think it was going to happen, but it did happen. So being prepared is just checking the box of educating yourself about what could happen if a nuke hits the United States, or multiple nukes, or a full-fledged nuclear war. Yes, it's going to be catastrophic. Your life will cease to exist as you know it. It will be terrible. You can survive. Some people say, I don't want to survive. Um, I would love them to be standing next to my bunker and they're outside and I have two extra spots and they're standing outside and, and I say well you said you didn't want to survive no they will be clamoring at the door to say hey let me in please and that's what probably will happen so let's answer some questions first one was not enough time warning time to tape up your windows as we progress if we see increased problems that means you have to increase your plan. Make sure you have tape, make sure you have plastic, make sure you have preparations. Um, right now, it's we're in the planning stages. You need to have a plan. Some people are you know, going and buying some supplies to take care of that plan, some are not. So whatever you feel comfortable with, I'm not gonna tell you you need to do it. I'm gonna give you some options how to protect your family, and then you decide what is your timeline, buying stuff doing some things temporarily or going really full-fledged into trying to design uh, a bunker in your basement where you could survive. But the question is, I don't think I'm gonna have time to tape up all my windows. If you live at ground zero or very close, you might have limited amount of time. But if you're hours away from a target by driving, remember when that detonation occurs, it's going to be the wind and the environment that spreads that nuclear fallout. So if typically you live near a place and it takes two to three hours when they start getting a rainstorm or a snowstorm, you might have two to three hours. So that's gonna give you time. It might not be time to do everything. That's why whatever you can do today, do it. If it doesn't affect your family in the sense of, you know, you're not standing, putting, stacking sandbags in the living room and stuff like that, do whatever you can now so you'll have time. Um, and remember, you might have a little bit more time because as the fallout falls, it's going to be limited until it starts accumulating. But you, you want to be set before the first dust particles start falling on your house. Another, what is ground zero? This person, I think, lives 15 miles away from a potential site that could receive a, a weapon impact. Um, ground zero is sort of really confusing. I'm going to put a link in the description, and I'll put a link in the first comment. It's a nuke map where you can go in and plot out where you live and look at targets nearby and actually have strikes on those targets and it will show you the rings of damage going out that is a good thing because i can't tell you because i don't know what particular strength weapon is going to impact then you have what happened if they're not accurate what happened if they're off by five miles by 10 miles i don't know um, but typically this is a good resource so please go there find your location and then plot some major cities or military bases around you. Typically the Soviet Union used to have uh, some really really big bombs but those weren't really practical. So they have a lot of smaller bombs that are in the range of about 100 to 800 kiloton, not even a megaton. So if I were you, I would for sure, if it's a really major target, plot at least a, a half a megaton, 500 kiloton. Um, you can go up to a megaton uh, for a worst case scenario. So use that map, plot it, and then see where your ring is. Uh, 15 miles, you could be safe. Um, you're not gonna be in the blast, the actual blast, but the damage rings extend out 
and that map will help you. It will explain, you know, you could receive some thermal burns. So look at that map. That is a must. Put your location in there and pl plot where you think you could have problems. So she's 15 miles away. That is good. I would feel somewhat comfortable with 15 miles away, but I would be prepared because you want to be where you know if you know there's a flash or you know there's an impact, do not look at it because you're going to get hit with tornado type winds, pressure coming out. So you need to immediately seek shelter. I don't care if it's just diving down behind something. Don't stand there like, oh, I think that was a nuclear weapon. No, you have to react because if you hesitate, uh, you will probably get killed standing there. You need to react and get behind something solid to protect yourself. Another question. Uh, how far away from the blast to keep you safe from gamma radiation? Gamma radiation is going to travel with the environment, with the wind. So some places it might fall out quicker, some places it might not. Also remember we might have multiple, multiple nuclear strikes in the United States and that radiation is going to be driven by the environment, the wind, the uh, uh, high altitude winds. So it's hard to give you an answer, you know, how far away would that affect you? It depends on the environment. All right, next one it was re in related to heat and air conditioning. What happens if it's cold outside? What happens if it's warm outside? Do they need their heat and air? You gotta turn everything off because you have to close off all air intake into the house. So you're going to lose your air conditioning. You're gonna lose your heat. Make sure that's important. You don't wanna be sucking any type of air outside in. Now granted, most of those systems would go through furnace filters, but we still do not want it. Turn all that off. Turn off your natural gas for sure if you have time. That would help with any type of fire and explosion. Also, another question was on wells. You might have a well that is a bored well. That's a piece of concrete that actually bore it into the earth and then put a piece of concrete in. You need to make sure that, that no groundwater can get into that and usually they are safe, especially with a six inch uh, well that we have here. Uh, those are very self-contained in the sense that that casing will go all the way down to bedrock. So it's very hard for contaminated rainwater to get into wells if they're sealed properly. So you'll probably be fine, which is a big plus. Um, because there'll be a lot of water that from municipal sources that get it from open sources like we have lakes around here that they draw water from That water would not be good now eventually it will be good and they might be able to do some type of filtration But overall immediately after when you need water your wells are going to be good But the best thing to do is to store as much water as you can to get you through a week or a month Whatever you can store before you rely on any other water I hope this helps. I'll be glad to answer any more questions. Uh, the threat of nuclear war is real. It is the highest it's ever been. Do I want you to dwell on it? No, I don't want you to dwell on it to the point of worrying about it. But you got to prepare. And half the battle is having a plan, writing that plan down, figuring it out. Because when the crunch comes and when you have stress in your life, do not then decide, oh, I need a plan. At that point, your plan needs to be implemented and you might need to buy a few things. You might need to buy some sandbags. You might need to buy some you know, concrete blocks. You might need to buy some plastic. Now is the time to get a plan and that's all I'm asking you to do. Have a solid plan uh, so when the problem, it gets worse, you could implement your plan and not be running around like a chicken with your head cut off. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.